assay? It's just a fancy word for an experiment where we're measuring the amount of something. And by something, we could be talking about like the presence of a molecule, how much of this protein is present. That would be a type of concentration assay. Or we could be talking about the amount of doability. So how much ability is there for this molecule to bind this other molecule, a binding assay, or carry out some specific function, a functional assay. In the case of an enzyme, we can talk about enzyme activity assays, which measure the ability of an enzyme to carry out um, whatever task it does, whether that be cutting nucleic acids or cutting proteins or um, putting, piecing together molecules, all these various reactions. So we have different types of assays that we can use to measure all of these different things. Things. Typically, there's not just like one way to do something, not just one type of assay. Instead, there's a lot of different ways to get about the same or at least a similar answer. And what assay you choose is going to depend on things like what molecules you're using. Some assays have different like incompatibilities with various methods. And then it also depends on what equipment is available to you. So let's talk a little bit more about these assays themselves. Assays, they all, in addition to varying based on what they're measuring, they're also going to vary in how they're measuring it, like what techniques that they use. They'll also vary in the type of results that they can give you. So some assays are what we call quantitative. And when you hear quantitative, think numbers. Or I guess in this case, when you see numbers, think quantitative. With a quantitative assay, you're actually getting a number for the measurement. Whereas with a qualitative assay, it's more just like a yes-no type of thing. So a qualitative assay might tell you, okay, well, is a molecule present, yes or no? And a quantitative assay might tell you, okay, well, how much of the molecule is present? To be truly quantitative, it's going to tell you like exactly how much of it's present, at least if you're in within like the range of the assay. So there's like a quantitative range where it might give you a number if you're outside of that range, but it only guarantee that it's gonna be pretty accurate in this specific quantitation, quantitative range. And then there's kind of the in-between, which is the semi-quantitative. With this, you're kind of getting a ballpark figure or like an estimate. So it might be something like high, medium, or low, but not actually specific values. For example, think about if you were trying to measure like the pH. So pH is a measure of the amount of protons that are available and so a measure of acidity. And so you can basically think about, okay, well, if I use this indicator dye, it'll change colors when the pH is a certain level. So if there's, say, an acid present, it'll change colors. And so if an acid is present, it'll be able to tell me this. But that's basically all it can tell me. So it'll give me this yes, no answer. Is the pH below a certain value? Is there an acid present? But if you want to actual numbers, well, what if you put a pH paper strip? Well, theirs is kind of like semi-quantitative. There's a range of values it'll give you. Um, those, maybe it'll have those little squares and each square will be a different value. And if that one lights up, then you, get, you know it's that pH, but it's about, it's a rough estimate. If you though put your probe into the mixture, well, now you can get an actual quantitative amount, the exact pH of the mixture. So that's telling you like this measurement of the amount of protons that are, that are free protons that are around. And so this is another, um, this also shows the point that with an assay, we're typically not measuring the thing directly. We're measuring some sort of indirect indication of what's actually going on, of what's actually present in the mixture. So assays, they typically have readouts that can be like dye-based or fluorescence-based, um, things like this. So lots of different readouts. And this will also um, impact what assay you choose is what you have in terms of ability to detect. So some common assays that you'll come across in biochemistry include various concentration assays. We sometimes talk about like protein assays, which are measuring protein concentration. Things like a Bradford assay, a BCA assay, a Lowry assay. And again, the assay that you choose, in this case, it often depends on what properties there are of in the mixture that your molecules in there might be like incompatibilities with detergents and things like this that would make you want to choose one method versus another. Then we have various binding assays. With a binding assay we're often using various like biophysical techniques, um, things like SBR, surface plasmon resonance, um, things like ITC, isothermal calorimetry, various um, blotting techniques like slot blots, 
all sorts of different binding assays where we're measuring binding strength. And we're typically varying concentrations when we do these assays in order to get a range of values that we can then fit with a curve and things like this. So with an assay, you're, typically, you're often changing, systematically changing the concentration of one of the things um, to measure, to get more accurate measurements, as well as to measure things like binding constants. Or in the case of an activity assay, you could be measuring um, like the rate constants by varying these different components and seeing um, the trend of the curve and plotting all that and all that good mathy stuff. So with an activity assay, the, here the methods are going to vary very broadly because different enzymes do different things and so if you want to measure what the enzyme does, well then you have to be measuring the thing that the enzyme does. Um, and so you'll have a bunch of different readouts for this. Um, but there are various reporters, there are various systems where if it gives off um, the product can be converted into something else and you can see that or you can measure the ATP that's released as the process of this or that's burned in the process of this. So there are various ways that you don't have to have like, a super different assay for each enzyme that you want to test. Um, but so that enzyme activity assay, that's an example of a functional assay. So it's important to have functional assays where we can actually test the ability of a molecule to carry out whatever its function is. Um, and sometimes to carry out a function that you wouldn't normally think it would do, but it can do um, because the, there are assays that can measure that more easily. Um, so we often use like artificial substrates and things like this. Go check out posts on enzymes for more about that. But you have these different um, this is an activity assay is a type of functional assay. And with this functional assays, it's really important because you want to make sure that the molecules that you are measuring are actually functional. So if you do a protein purification and you see, okay, well, I did this Bradford assay, I did one of those concentration assays, and it tells me I have a lot of protein present, but is that protein actually functional? To do that, you need to do a functional activity to see if the function is, um, if it is still functional, is it well folded? Is it acting how, the way it should act? And similarly, if you make a mutation to a protein, you probably not just want to know the concentration, but you want to see how it affects the function. And so you carry out a functional assay. So assay, just a word for an experiment where we're measuring things. We're not just doing something to take a look. Um, we're not just running a gel to see how pure it is. We're not just purifying a protein to purify a protein. Those are all experiments. Those are all great things, um, but those aren't assays. But if we're measuring the amount of the protein present, if we're measuring the ability of the protein to bind another molecule, or to slice the molecule or to do whatever, a mo whatever function it carries out. That is an example of an assay. So we use this term assay a lot to talk about a lot of different things and that's all it means. Just think an experiment where you're measuring something. I highly recommend that you go and you learn about all these different assay techniques that are used um, different pros and cons of each of these, not only is this going to help you better design and carry out your own experiments, but it's going to help you interpret the results of other people's experiments, um, such as when you're reading about them in papers. And so by learning about these different assay strategies, you're able to get this better sense. So fittingly, I'm recording this at St. Mary's, um, so you can think of it as kind of like my first uh, lecture at St. Mary's. Uh, not really, I'm just here for some HR stuff, but um, it's fitting because I first learned the term assay here and I remember being really confused about it the first time I heard it but I was too embarrassed to ask. I got over that embarrassment quickly and started asking a lot of questions. But when I come back here I want to make sure that my students are going to be very comfortable asking any question that they have. That's one of the key things that I want to kind of imprint on them in that first um, that first day of class with their syllabus and everything. Like ask as many questions as you want. Um, don't feel embarrassed. Questions are how we learn. Lots of other people probably have the same question they're just not saying it um, and so it's better to learn things right the first time um, not think that you know things and then be learning things wrong and then have to relearn everything or just be confused and especially when you're getting those fundamentals down you want to make sure that you you really get them down the right way so wherever you do no matter if it's an assay or something else don't be afraid to ask um, go ahead and ask and find things out and that's how you learn